Welcome to our Open Talk series. My name is Teresa Züger and I'm the research lead of the AI and Society Lab. I'm leading an interdisciplinary research group that wants to find out how AI can serve the public interest. And pretty early in our research, we understood that this is such a big and complex question that we cannot solve it completely by ourselves. So in this series of conversations, we speak to people who bring in their experiences and their research to find out the limits and the potential of AI to serve the public interest. And we really hope you enjoy these conversations. My name is Stefan Dreyer. I'm one of the senior researchers, um, the one for media, res uh, media law and media governance at the Leibniz Institute for Media Research. And I'm, I've been working in this position for almost 20 years now. So um, I'm a lawyer by, by training uh, and my research focuses on general transformation of media use, uh, media power, um, and the regulatory challenges that um, brings um, with it. Now I'm speaking to you as one of the PIs of a project financed by the Bavarian Institute for G Digital Transformation. That project is called Coding Public Value. The main context and the problem that we want to clarify a bit is that in changing media landscapes, there is ongoing pressure and public debate on how public service media uh, companies or broadcasters can change with these developments. So one sentence regarding this public service media companies, those are the ones established by law in Germany and that have a specific public value remit. The idea here is that um, more and more media offerings in um, online environments, and the question is, um, if you use offerings in online environments, you need software to do so, um, and how these very general and broad remits can be applied to those software em environments, and especially to the engineering process of those uh, software products. Uh, as you might already know, this is not only a legal issue in the sense of uh, regulatory requirements, requirements engineering, but they are also deep, deeply involved into uh, public discourse and political discourse regarding the expectations that society has towards those um, broadcasters. The software engineering part plays a specific role within this project because we um, want to come up with ideas and options on how to translate those expectations into formalized software. How would you define public value? We try to come up with a definition of public value. Um, and public value is not even a vague legal term that you can find anywhere in, in legal texts. Public value is as itself an estimation or an expectation towards specific organizational structures and uh, forms of conduct um, that might lead to public value as an outcome. You search for requirements necessary to the engineering process to achieve public value. Does this change the process of engineering generally? The answer is yes. This changes um, to, to a significant degree how you develop software because um, this is not only user or business model focused, but you have to uh, consider more public or stakeholder related requirements as well. This is kind of a deliberation. The deliberative part is already proceduralized in public service media. So they have internal boards, for instance, that check on um, how those concretization has taken place and whether this is still within the public value remit. There is no single true understanding of democracy. How do you translate this diversity into a proper media diversity? There's also these a part of service offerings where I as a user might be able to decide on what algorithm um, I want to select for my, for my content. And this is where we can apply the concept of diversity, not on the diversity of content, but on the diversity of selection mechanisms that I can choose from. 
So this is very much a level um, of understanding of diversity that can now be applied to, to software of those, of those um, public service media providers. So that's a very interesting thing to have because then we have to think about user interfaces, for instance. What does that mean? How can I explain to an end user that there are different understandings of democracy understanding based um, selection models um, for diversity or diverse content? What's your opinion on the challenge of translating requirements from the regulatory sphere into software development? We have discussions about this uh, challenge almost every week um, between us and, and the software engineering colleagues. There's so much going away in translation already between lawyers and software engineers. If you look at the uh, latest proposal on the um, AI regulation of the European Commission, uh, it was I was shivering because there's so much implicitly going on in, into those provisions. So this is the first challenge, coping with those legal terms that somehow should be applied or have to be applied into software without understanding from a legal perspective how software engineering works. And the second challenge that we saw is that legal understandings of words or norms change over time because of court rulings, for instance. And that is, again, not how software is being built. Once the system has gone live, you will optimize it towards a better user experience, but you are seldomly uh, using the software to get a feedback loop to the uh, legal requirements. So we need a model that is also available in live systems to be um, sustainable or sustainably compliant with the legal requirements. And for that, you need someone who is also monitoring changes on the legal level. Our open talks are open for collaboration. Contact us to get involved.